Handheld gaming PCs. It's a niche that is becoming more and more mainstream with every passing day. And I, for one, am absolutely here for that trend to continue. But as more and more people are deciding to buy and use handhelds, sometimes as their only gaming PCs, the need for more performance becomes more evident. So you turn to an even tighter niche of products like external graphics cards. Today, we're gonna go over the latest option from One X Player in the One X GPU. Go over the specs and see if you should consider buying one if your handheld isn't performing as well as you'd hoped. Are you struggling to play the latest games because your PC just isn't up to the task? Is your new handheld not quite as powerful as you were hoping for? With Maximum Settings Cloud Gaming, you can get access to a powerful gaming PC in the cloud with the ability to stream a wide range of games and programs to nearly any device. Powered by a foundation of open source software like Linux Mint, Proxmox, Sunshine, and Moonlight, you'll have access to a Linux desktop, all pre-configured with Steam, Heroic Games, Lutris, and more. Virtualized gaming machines start at just $9.95 a month Canadian, or around $7.40 US, and you'll be up in gaming just a few minutes after creating your account. Or for uncompromised performance, opt for bare metal access with an AMD 7800X3D CPU and a Radeon RX 7900XT graphics card. I've demoed self-hosted cloud gaming on this channel before, but not everyone's crazy enough to have a server rack out in their garage. Get the flexibility of a cloud gaming system without the hassle of building and maintaining it yourself. Visit MaximumSettings.com or click the link down in the video description to get started today. And thanks to Maximum Settings Cloud Gaming for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. So this is the One X GPU, an external GPU designed for the One X player. The unit itself is extraordinarily compact, as far as eGPUs go anyway, coming in at smaller than the One X Fly that I've been testing it with. Before we get into it, my standard review disclosure applies. One X Player did send over the One X GPU for this review. No money changed hands, though the One X GPU doesn't need to be returned after this review is completed. And as always, One X Player will have no input over the content of this video, nor will they see the review before it goes live on YouTube. Gaming handhelds for the last year or so have kind of felt like they've peaked. The hardware inside most handhelds are governed by a set of rules, dictated by the laws of thermodynamics, energy density, and sometimes just good old fashioned physics. The size and weight of gaming handhelds are limited because you need to be able to hold the device for extended periods of time. Cooling capacity and battery are limited because of those size and weight limitations. When it comes to CPU and GPU options, the only parts that have made sense within those limitations are AMD's current lineup of APUs, with the top offering being the Ryzen 7840U, featuring a 30-watt TDP, powered by 8 Zen 4 cores and 12 compute units of RDNA 3 graphics thanks to the onboard Radeon 780M graphics processor. And yes, I know chips like the Z1 and the 8840U exist, but those are just slightly better bins of the 7840U. That combo is enough to get the job done in most modern games, especially considering the size of the display. It makes little sense to drive 1080p ultra settings in a game when you're staring at a 7-inch screen. All that extra eye candy isn't going to be seen on such a small display, and just draws more power to render anyway. But what about those people who want a gaming handheld to serve as their only gaming device, and want a game on a larger display where low settings don't exactly hold up? The One X Fly here does support HDMI or DisplayPort out via its USB-C port, so there's nothing really stopping you from using this handheld as a standard PC with a simple docking station. But like I said, 1080p low settings looks fine on a handheld display, but some games are downright ugly or even broken when scaled up to 27 inches. So some additional GPU power is going to be a must. The One X GPU is a USB 4.0 or Oculink connected docking station with the usual assortment of ports. There are a pair of HDMI ports, a single display port for video output, gigabit ethernet, along with a pair of USB 3.0 ports. But this docking station really isn't what's important here. Let's talk about the graphics card that comes inside. Along with the assortment of I.O. ports, this is rocking an AMD RX 7600M XT mobile graphics card. It's based on the same RDNA 3 architecture as the Radeon 780M APU inside of the 7840U, but it has 32 compute units instead of just 12. We're also no longer limited to fitting inside of the 780M's 15 watt TDP, with the 7600M XT able to suck down a full 120 watts of frame rendering power. 
There's one last party trick on the One X GPU though, and it's right here under this magnetic flap around the back. There's an M.2 slot for installing an additional NVMe drive, allowing you to have additional storage when your handheld is docked. Now my normal operating procedure for a review is talk about the specs of a product, then go into impressions and benchmarks and use cases, and then finally wrap it up with price. But I think I'm gonna go inverted in this one. The One X GPU is available for $699. You can also opt to have an NVMe drive installed by default with one terabyte and four terabyte options costing $799 and $999 respectively. But those prices are direct off of One X Player's website. On Amazon, the One X GPU is going for $835, pricing it identically to GPD's G1 eGPU, which is also running an RX 7600 MXT. It's expensive. There's no other way to put it. While it is one of the most compact eGPU solutions I've ever seen, it's also using a laptop variant graphics card, making it slower than those that are using full desktop GPUs. And I mean, $700 is roughly the entry point for eGPUs anyway, with external Thunderbolt enclosures running north of $300 without a GPU inside of them. But the reason I wanted to start with the price is... I'm sure my brain is doing the same thing like some of you. I just can't get around $700 for what is basically a stripped down $300 graphics card. That's $700 on top of a $900 gaming handheld to be able to play games at 1080p without being stuck at low settings. Just for comparison's sake, for $748, I got on Amazon and put together a complete gaming PC. That is a Ryzen 5500 6-core CPU, an Asus RX 7600 XT 16GB graphics card, 16GB of DDR4 3200 memory, a 1TB Gen 3x4 NVMe drive, a power supply, and a case. From a value perspective, nothing about an eGPU comes anywhere close to making sense. You're paying strictly for the form factor and it's a very steep tax to be sure. Let's say you have a gaming handheld like the One X Fly or the Ionio 2 or a GPD Win 4, and you prefer having only one device and you just want faster performance when connected to a monitor. What is the performance actually like on the One X GPU? I benchmarked the One X GPU a couple different ways. First off, I ran it through the 3 d Mark suite to see exactly how much faster the RX 7600 MXT is than the Radeon 780M inside of the One X Fly on the 7840U APU. But that only tells part of the story. The One X Fly is never going to handle games at 1080p and ultra settings, so running games at ultra settings to test them to eliminate GPU and CPU bottlenecks isn't going to show you real-world performance gains. The One X Fly handles most games fairly well at low to medium settings, and I'll typically tune individual games on handhelds to hit 60 FPS. But then, if I'm installing a more powerful graphics card, I'm not going to use those same settings when connected to a monitor. The point of a faster GPU is to either run games faster, or to be able to increase settings for better quality rendering in games. The 3 d Mark test should show exactly how much faster the eGPU is than the APU. The gaming tests, on the other hand, should show real-world expectations that you should have if you're interested in the One X GPU. I also opted to run the One X Fly at its max 30 watt TDP performance settings to see what is possible in either configuration. Usually, when reviewing handhelds, I try to balance performance with battery life, again keeping results rooted in the real world. Given we're talking about running this as a docked PC, it didn't make sense to use anything but the max power settings. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks. Starting off with DirectX 11 and 3 d Mark Firestrike, the Radeon 780M manages an overall score of 6703 with a graphics score of 7390. Running off the One X GPU, we see the overall score climb to 19,019, with the graphics score hitting 27,379. That's 2.8 and 3.7 times faster respectively, and hopefully a good expectation of what's to come. Moving on to DirectX 12 with 3 d Mark Time Spy, we see very similar results as the previous test. The 780M manages an overall score of 3,011, with a graphics score of 2,755. The 7600 MXT proves to be around three times faster again, improving the overall score to 8910, with the graphics score also proving itself exponentially better at 9493. Now, I don't think anyone realistically expects either GPU configuration to handle ray tracing very well, but I tested it out anyway. 
In Port Royal, the 780M managed barely 6 frames per second, with a final score of 1363. The One X GPU again saw around a 3x performance improvement, though that's not saying much considering the baseline. Here we see around 21 frames per second on average, with a final score of 4417. If your game supports ray tracing, I do recommend leaving it turned off in most cases. Moving into gaming, let's start out with one of the most demanding titles from today's test with Starfield. Even at 1080p and low settings, the 7840U APU and 780M graphics card struggle with Bethesda's latest RPG, not even averaging 30 frames per second and with lows of just 11. Of course, we can also take advantage of AMD's FSR 3, which does turn this slideshow into an actually playable experience on the handheld with an average of 45 frames per second. While the game looks decent enough with these settings on the One X Fly 7-inch display, if you're watching this recording on a desktop monitor right now, you probably agree with me that everything is fuzzy and a bit dull. Connecting to the One X GPU, my expectations were to be able to run this game at high settings, preferably without FSR enabled, but that just wasn't in the cards for Starfield. At high settings, we see almost identical results to the 780M low settings test, with an average of just 25 frames per second and a low of 13. And again, this game isn't playable at that frame rate. Enabling FSR 3 does improve performance, jumping to an average of 45 frames per second and a 0.1% low of 20. Playable, but still far from great, and a game that you likely want to avoid on this particular setup. One of the most popular recent games sees players spreading democracy through explosions. And of course, I'm talking about Helldivers 2. It is a heck of a lot of fun and performs reasonably well on the One X Fly's APU. At 1080p and low settings, we get an average of 72 frames per second with a 1% low of just 57. Overall, the game felt very smooth and responsive despite a 0.1% low of only 17 frames per second. At low settings though, distant objects and structures fade in and out of existence due to aliasing and blur. Things like radio antennas are blocky and undefined, even on the 7-inch handheld display. Running through the One X GPU, I turned the game up to the high graphics preset, which sharpened the game dramatically. Distant objects stayed sharp and were much easier to see overall. Average performance dropped slightly to 61 frames per second with a 1% low of 45, but the 0.1% low improved from 17 to 37 frames per second, meaning frame times were much more consistent. Moving into some race action in Project Cars 3, this game looks incredible on the mobile display, even at 1080p and low settings. Plus, performance is incredibly impressive as well, with an average of 83 frames per second and a 0.1% low of just 35. With the One X GPU connected, I turned all of the eye candy to Ultra just to see if the 7600 MXT could handle it. The game still managed to hit 52 frames per second on average, and even more impressively was the 0.1% low of just 32. Just like Helldivers, the game was incredibly consistent, making the slightly lower FPS much less of a factor than you might expect. I'd probably still drop the settings one notch if this was my daily driver setup, aiming for something like 75 to 80 FPS on average on the bigger display. But overall, a very solid result here. While I had an overall smooth experience with the One X GPU, I did have at least one major issue, and it happened in Wreckfest. While not the most demanding game, it does stress some systems when you have all 24 opponents on the track at the same time. At 1080p and medium settings, the Radeon 780M had little issue with the game, averaging an astonishing 114 frames per second with a 0.1% low of 61. I had assumed connecting the One X GPU would allow me to run this game at ultra settings with similarly impressive results, but what I got was a stuttery and unplayable mess. Here we see an average of only 40 frames per second and a 0.1% low of 5.3. The average is also not indicative of my actual experience here. The game would swing wildly between 60 and single digit performance metrics, depending on how many AI cars were on the screen. I've never had this issue in this game before, and I spent nearly three hours troubleshooting settings, drivers, and anything else I could think of to check before just chalking this one up to incompatibility with the eGPU for whatever reason. 
And of course, no craft computing benchmark session would be complete without finishing up with Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. On the 1X Fly, and again at 1080p and low settings, we get an average of 62 frames per second with a 1% low of 37. That is a very solid result and more than playable on such a small screen. Low settings even hold up quite well on a desktop monitor for what it's worth. On the One X GPU, we were able to run at 1080p with high settings, all without enabling FSR. Here we get an average of 103 frames per second with a 1% low of 33. The game is overall sharper and much better looking, though this is one of those that I'd argue really doesn't increase playability thanks to higher settings. I had no easier time moving, aiming, or even identifying enemies at 1080p high settings than I did at 1080p low settings. While performance is definitely better, I don't think you need to purchase a $700 eGPU just to play this game and have a good time with it. So with all that out of the way, is the One X GPU a product that you should consider picking up for yourself? The RX 7600 MXT does provide a nearly three times performance boost as the Ryzen 7840U APU, and made a huge difference in playability in multiple titles that I tested today. The One X GPU is well built, well equipped, and provides both additional graphics horsepower and additional storage for your gaming handheld. I feel like there aren't many other options on the market right now that do all of that and check all of those boxes if you wanted to add graphics card performance to your handheld gaming PC. So yes, it does kind of feel like it's worth it in that specific use case. But then I have to ask why you'd want to do that. Even as a handheld gaming PC enthusiast, I have to question if that specific use case should even be on the table to consider. $900 for a gaming handheld is already expensive, and $700 for, like I mentioned before, what is basically a $300 graphics card is a bit much. When I look around at other competing markets right now, ignoring the question of can I upgrade the GPU on my gaming handheld, and instead focus on the question how can I play games at 1080p high settings on a desktop monitor, I come up with answers like the $748 desktop PC I mentioned earlier. Or for just a tiny bit more, get yourself a full-blown laptop. Here's an HP Victus laptop with a 144Hz screen and an RTX 4060 for $869. No eGPU required to get basically identical performance to what I showed today. Do you want to keep a similar form factor on your desk as the eGPU from One X Player? Small form factor desktops exist, like the Minis Forum HX99G, which features an 8-core Ryzen 6900HX and a Radeon RX 6650M graphics card for $799. Now, none of those are handhelds, and I fully understand that. But those will give you similar performance to the One X GPU for a similar price point as the One X GPU. But they're also all complete PCs without the need to connect your already $900 handheld to them to make them work. I love handheld gaming PCs. I love this form factor. I love it more than you could possibly imagine, dating back to the Samsung Q1, which was a tiny little 900 megahertz Atom-powered tablet that had a mouse slider joystick combination input. And I used that all the time almost 15 years ago. I have been a longtime enthusiast of this niche. And while I don't have anything negative to say about the One X GPU when I look at other eGPU solutions on the market today, I do have to question if any of them are worth purchasing. And time and time again, my answer is a steadfast no, despite the enthusiast in me desperately wanting eGPUs to succeed and have a place in the market. I like the One X GPU. I like external GPUs. I like this form factor of a docking station graphics card combination that can add 3x, 4x performance uplift to a gaming handheld or a laptop or anything similar if you want to dock it and use a keyboard and mouse and a monitor. My problem is the pragmatist in me questions why you're asking that question in the first place. But what do you think? Is there a specific reason eGPUs like the One X GPU should be used instead of a standalone gaming machine? And before you answer, I will remind you that cloud saves are basically a standard feature in game launchers these days. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on social media at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. 
And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, there's a couple ways you can do that. First off, go over to craftcomputing.store, grab one of our fantastic nucleated pint glasses or our all new beer installation floppy disk coaster and uh, start drinking like a pro. Secondly, join my Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you can get access to my exclusive Discord server, where you can chat with myself, as well as the other hosts from Talking Heads. That's gonna do for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. You know what the advantage of a 19 ounce can is? Just when you think you're done with a pint, you get almost a full other half pint. Today's beer is from Fremont Brewing out of Seattle, Washington. It is the Hustle Double IPA, and I did find a little Easter egg on here. The dream is free. The hustle is sold separately. I do like that. Double IPA clocking in at 9%. Ooh, and I can smell the hops from here. Yes. My nucleated pint glass is doing some work in this one. Oh, that looks fantastic. <laughs> Bitter. It's the one word I can think of to describe this beer. It's just bitter. And I don't mean that in a bad way. This is a West Coast IPA drinker's West Coast IPA. This isn't gonna mess you up with floral notes or melon or citrus or, you know, sweet fruit or anything like that. This is literally all about, I love hops. I love driving by hop fields. I love driving behind harvest trucks. I love the smell of October in Oregon. That's what this beer is about. And I know it's a Seattle, Washington beer. Oregon is hop central. Oregon is hop mecca. Oregon is where you grow your hops, Washington, and you freaking know it. It's a very earthy IPA. It's rich, it's not refreshing. It's an IPA I genuinely need a burger with it to enjoy. Although I am enjoying it by itself quite easily. If I had to explain this beer to someone, let's say, you're a guitarist. You've got a Marshall amplifier. And it goes 0 to 10. And Sierra Nevada is about a 6. This is the spinal tap of West Coast IPAs. This one goes to 11.